easy main sync understanding staccato and all that if, you, if you're not familiar it's really simple if you just break it down like this so this is line frequency where I live 60 Hertz sine wave as you can see got zero volts right here got a positive swing of voltage negative swing of voltage we cut this whole cycle in half and we've got half wave if we cut that in half got a quarter wave so typically these are quarter wave ran I run mine half wave this occurs this half wave takes about over a little bit over eight milliseconds the quarter wave takes a little bit over about four milliseconds a natural ramping voltage this is what's coming out of your line this is what will be feeding into your Tesla coil but because you know it's an inverter it takes the DC voltage so you're only going to feed it half of it at a time so if you were to half wave rectify your input and that's what it's going to look like straight from the wall if you were to full wave rectify your input then you're basically going to take this and just flip it over so you're going to have two of those and it's going to look like some boobies so instead of having a 60 hertz hump that occurs with half wave rectification you're going to have the two boobies that occur at 120 hertz so you're going to double the frequency of this hump that you see so the idea is very simple if you don't smooth this natural line voltage out the sine ramp by adding a DC capacitor which is going to flatten that voltage out like that if you don't add that then you're left with the natural ramp the idea obviously is that's normally bad because well if you've got an interrupter and you decide that you want to interrupt it interrupter is going to cut on at just random arbitrary times you might have an on time that starts right here or one over here one over here so they're going to have different lengths because they're going to have different voltages applied to them over that period of time. The idea there is, well, you just need the interrupter to know exactly when to cut on during the beginning of this ramp. Common way is to use a transformer. So this transformer is plugged into the same line frequency, the same mains power as your Tesla coil. So when that transformer sees this rising sine wave, this rising half wave hump, it's going to see it at the same time, theoretically, as the Tesla coil will so it says oh it's starting so then it tells your bridge to cut on and that's the power that it catches from low notions website you know he's got a setup that goes over this the ramps ramped uh, Tesla coil setup but you know he's got a circuit here which he accomplishes that with this is his main sync circuit interrupter so if you can see what's happening this is half the cycle here so this is a, basically an entire half wave right here and um, this is the on time coming from the interrupter here so this is the square wave that's going to be telling the gate drivers to cut on you see he's got it happening right as that voltage begins to rise and then he has it cutting off maybe a little bit here after the amplitude peaks right here so basically the on time is only during the point when the voltage rises up and gets all the way to the peak and then it shuts off and it just does that over a period of repetitions and that's how you get your interrupted effect you know without having a DC reservoir now likewise if you didn't want to interrupt it you can just run it straight off your line power like this you're just going to rectify it and not smooth it and not worry about interrupting it so then naturally what's going to happen there is your bridge is just going to naturally catch these ramps and depending on how you rectify it if you half wave rectify it like this then it's just going to catch these ramps at 60 hertz you're just going to have 60 of them every second if you full wave rectify it again then you're going to have the boobies and you're basically going to catch those humps at 120 hertz so it's going to speed up so obviously the idea there is if you run that output like i am in this coil then you're basically able to pull thicker arcs if you wanted to you're going to have more power in them the only difference is you'll have less of a defined ramp that you can see over time there's less of a break in between the next one so you might not have as long of arcs that could propagate but you might you know here's the steve ward driver it's pretty much based around very common setup i don't have smoothing so the whole point of the staccato that i explained is to just have the interrupted feature that's simple basically that's the driver except i'm using that to drive the full bridge so this this setup is stronger than what he's running it for right it's more capable than what he's using it for in this circuit i think he even notes that Uzor's 2k it's eric taylor and this is a pretty common circuit so you can see it's just using the cd4046 feedback driving the gate drivers driving a half bridge and this is also unfiltered half wave rectified 
unfiltered so and that's the characteristic look that you'll see so if he ran that staccato then you just you know you're going to see pretty much these long arcs here at whatever repetition that he wanted and of course you know the idea of the full bridge is just it's pretty simple you know with a half bridge you've got a voltage divider here so if you look at your primary your load then power you know, again these are all dc they're inverters so you've got a positive and a negative you've got two switches that are going to alternate so it's going to go like this going to go through this one go down go like that then it's going to go the other way go through this side go down through that switch so you've just got a basically half your rail voltage it's alternating in each direction to the primary so then obviously you compare that to the full bridge these are Steve Ward circuits you can see what happens here if you've got alternating switches which is how this has to switch so basically you're going to have power going through like this it's going to come down Go through one switch, go through the load, go down this one. So these two opposing ones will be on at the same time while these other ones are off. Then it's going to come down the other way. Go, you know, go through this one, zigzag, come back down through that one. So you've got your full rail voltage switching across the load in each direction. So you're going to have full rail voltage, positive and negative, across the uh, primary. And in my case, I just had to add two extra switches instead of adding a voltage doubler. And in my case, I just found that more ideal.